1922, William Hayes formed the Motion Pictures Distributors Association of America to represent the major film studios and to ensure viability for the then infant American film industry. In 1930, William Hayes implemented the Motion Picture Production Code, otherwise known as the Hayes Code. The studios agreed to self-impose censorship on their movies, removing profanity, realistic violence, nudity, either suggestive or graphic, and any sexual perversions. Many directors worked within the code as much as they could. Couples were only shown in bed together if one party had their feet on the floor, kisses would only last three seconds, and all swearing was removed, no matter how fucking stupid that looked. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Saying damn at the end of Gone with the Wind was the most controversial thing about that film at the time of release. Little did they know, in the 2020s, they would slap a warning on the DVD box about the historical context regarding its depiction of black people, and not mention the swearing at all. In 1952, the American Supreme Court confirms that motion pictures are forms of expression, and therefore protected by the First Amendment. But for some reason, the Hayes Code continued to 1968. That's a year when the news looked like this. And cinema looked like this. The happiness and harmony that marriage truly promises. Tastes had changed so much that there were a lot of films pushing back against the Hayes Code too. Jack Valenti was appointed to the role of president of the board, which was then called the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America. He began to devise a new rating system. As of 1968, American movies were rated either G, M, R or X, the M rating later to become what was known as PG. This continued until 1984, where the rating PG-13 was introduced for films which fell in the middle ground between PG and the over-17 unless accompanied by an adult rating R. The first film to get this rating was the largely forgotten film, The Flamingo Kid. In 1990, the adult-only X rating was replaced with NC-17, meaning no children under 17, even if accompanied with an adult. The home movie rental chain, Blockbuster, refused to stock any movie of this certificate, and many theatres did likewise, making it the kiss of death with regards to box office revenue, and forcing a lot of horror filmmakers to censor themselves again. In 1912, the UK formed the BBFC, the British Board of Film Censors, to oversee the certification of motion pictures for theatrical distribution. At first they had two categories, U for universal audiences and A for adult. They soon added an H for horrific, which was later changed to X, which restricted under 16s from admittance, and the A was changed to over 12 year olds only. In 1970, these certificates were changed again, U retaining the same value, A meaning adult supervision required, AA meaning over 14 year olds unless accompanied with an adult, and X, which was adults only. Which seems pretty clear, doesn't it? So they changed it again in 1982 to U, PG, 15, 18, and R18 for pornography, which is only screened in specialist cinemas. In 1989, especially for the hotly anticipated Batman film which was being released, a 12 certificate was created for cinema release, but not for home video. So any 12 rated cinema films were uprated to 15 on home viewing, up until 1994. Speaking of home video, when the home viewing market came to the UK, it was considered to be a part of the publishing industry and not exhibition. So home videos were not certificated, meaning anyone could rent anything and films which were censored by the BBFC could be released uncut to watch at home. This gave rise to the Video Nasty craze. The Video Nasties were a list of 72 particularly gruesome horror films that became the subject of a moral panic in the UK, mainly whipped up by one woman, Mary Whitehouse who, by her own confession, had not seen any of the films that offended her taste so much, and many of the politicians who took her side had only seen scenes taken out of context and compiled together by campaigners. News reports of the time claimed that kids were watching these films, and as many as 40% of school children had seen at least one video nasty. What they had in fact done is given children a four-page list of movies and told to tick the ones they've seen, and then took them at their word. When asked what happened in these films, the children said whatever they thought would happen based on the titles. And then the researchers, who also hadn't seen the films, said, Yeah, that sounds about right. A second research team did the same test but with four pages of fake movie titles and got pretty much the same result. But those findings were rejected, as the moral panic was at its height and people were convinced that horror movies were corrupting their kids in exactly the same way they think computer games are doing it now. 
or the way that people think that Dungeons and Dragons caused the satanic panic, or jazz music created loose morals, or impressionist paintings were filthy. If movies really influence people, then why is it only negatively? With all the musicals coming out in the 40s and 50s, why weren't people breaking into song every 15 minutes? It's because it doesn't make sense. People want to blame something for the nasties in the world, and it's easier to blame a movie than to face the fact that some people are just like that. It seems to me a strange double standard that books have no age restrictions on them at all, and are only ever censored by the publishers, and not some regulatory body. The only censorship music gets is if it's played on the radio. If you buy a CD, you might see a little warning in the corner, but that's not compulsory to have. The artist or record label has every right to say no thanks and leave the lyrical content a surprise. Every summer, there are school trips to the Globe Theatre to see Hamlet, and providing those kids remain well behaved throughout, no one cares that they've just sat through a story where literally everyone dies. Why is cinema treated differently? I'm not calling for these other mediums to be censored, in fact I would say that would be the worst possible outcome. I'm pleased that in 1999 the BBFC reformed and rebranded, they are no longer the British Board of Film Censorship, it's classification. Although I'm pleased this change has happened, I'm not sure why we have a board classifying movies and not one for books, music or theatre. Selling an underage child an 18 certificate movie is treated the same as selling them alcohol, but that same child can read any book by the Marquis de Sade. This is what I propose. Keep the A certificates as they are. I think they're clear, everyone understands how they work. But let the certification of the movie be chosen by the movie makers themselves. Maybe keep the BBFC around as an advisory board, but the last say should be to the person who made the film. This is a system which has worked at the Edinburgh Fringe. All of the shows they have have an age appropriateness rating, but there's no board imposing it upon them. I bet you, like many naysayers, are thinking, what if there's a terrifying horror show that some sadist has marked as being appropriate for family audiences? Well, that would be reflected in the reviews. When the critics say, this is not appropriate for family audiences, take note. If you're the sort of person that doesn't read reviews, well, watch a trailer, ask a friend, watch the film before taking along your young family. Or don't do that. Go to the cinema and walk out when it's too much for you. Or force your family to sit through the whole damn thing. It's your family, you can traumatise them if you want. I couldn't care less. This channel is about movies, and they should have the same freedoms that other mediums have. In America, you can choose to reject the certification of your movie. In the UK, you cannot get released without one. I'm against censorship, and I don't like distribution being gatekept by a group of people I can neither elect nor vote out. Film certification needs to change. I'm Scott Kingsnorth, and I'm making a movie.